Hey guys, Kevin here, and what I've got here is a box, a magical box. Uh, this is a microphone. Um, I've been looking to improve my setup, improve the audio and all that. Uh, just make the setup for streaming and recording videos a little bit better. So I like to talk about the mic. I like to show you the mic, do a very quick test. This isn't going to be a full review of the microphone. Uh, I just want to kind of mess around with it. And give you my initial thoughts. I'll do a full review later and test it better in another video but um, in this video it's really just a, a quick mess around with it. So I hope you enjoy the video. So what have I got? Well I have got the Rode Broadcaster. You can see down here that in the UK it's about the 285, 287 mark um, and that is more expensive than the one I've got here which is the Shure SM58, which is about 91 although you can get this really, really cheap secondhand simply because it's so, so common. So, the kind of pricing on this is a little bit uh, a little bit strange because in the, in the USA, is that loading? Yes, it is. Uh, in the USA, this microphone retails around 400 to 420 uh, and that is more expensive than another microphone I was looking at, which was the Shure SMB7, which I'm sure you've seen in many podcasts, such as the Joe Rogan show, uh, or Joe Rogan's podcast and all that. Um, it's very common, it's popular in radio shows as well, the Shure. Uh, it was used in Michael Jackson's Thriller. But in the UK, the Shure is a little bit, yeah, in, in the USA, it's about $10, $15 cheaper than a broadcaster. But in the UK, you can buy the Shure and it's about £50 more. So the prices are kind of reversed. Now, what does this have? Well, this microphone you can see here in the right hand side, uh, apparently, what's in here, uh, apparently has an internal pot filter, on air indicator LED, ultra low noise, uh, low cut feature, gold plated diaphragm, it's XLR. There's a polar pattern. So it looks like a, it looks like a good microphone. Now I will say, um, you guys know. Uh, yeah, that's the warranty. You guys know that um, I sometimes buy things second hand, and most of the time, I buy from CEX. CEX didn't have any good microphones available, and I've checked over the last month or so, and I've not seen any for sale. So I turned my eyes to eBay, and I saw it there. It says it was sold for £199. It wasn't. I actually bid £180 and I got it for £185. So if you look at the you know the retail price, I've got it £100 cheaper. I've basically got a third off. And I kind of debated whether that was a big enough saving because this is second hand. There's no original box. I think the manuals are there, I think. And I'm not sure whether that's worth it or not. But my idea was if it's, you know, when I get it, I'm going to put in the serial number and I'll make sure it's not a fake. And if it is a fake, I'll be getting sent back. But if it's not a fake, I could have got a bargain here. So, you know, just to um, remind you guys, this is a Shure SM58. And this is a really good microphone. On it. um, It's very popular. And as I said, this is very common with musicians. It's I think it's the most, it says here, the legendary vocal microphone and I think it is, you know, it's, it's probably the most common microphone in the world. Uh, it's very common, they drop it in bands and they drop it to the floor and this thing is really versatile, you know, I've got a windshield here and, right, I apologise if this is noisy. So this is to reduce the plosives, uh, Peter picked a pickle, that kind of thing and it is necessary. Now, this kind of grill um, this is actually easily replaceable. You can replace that for, I believe, it's like a pound fifty. Honestly, I saw that on eBay. You can get replacement grills for that really cheap. You can get replacements for that. This thing is built to last, and it's very cheap to repair, so that's why it's very common. And for a, a mic for YouTube, it's actually a very good option, especially if you've got a good audio interface. You can send enough gain. But let's look at the new microphone, and we'll see what it's like. And we'll see if it's a better option than my Shure SM58. So, um, let me see. Do you just want to see this? Is that exciting? I don't think it is. It's tough to get that 
camera up, get up high enough so you're not looking at my my legs, between my <laughs> legs, no one wants that. Um, oh my god, this isn't, this is good packaging, which is good from a, a delivery point of view, but it means that when you're actually opening it on camera, um, you'll be sitting here for ages. Right, okay. There we go. I'm going to kill myself with that Stanley. There must be a better way to do this. Right guys, I'll, ju I'll just switch to the, the main camera, it's a little bit better than that, showing you the two cameras. So, he has included the instruction manual, the seller has. He printed it out because he didn't actually have it, so fair play to him, thanks for that, I do appreciate it, if you're watching this. Um, I could have just downloaded that anyway. Um, that is the delivery information, which you guys can't see. Can I just get my personal info? So I believe, um, right, there's two things here. I believe this is the, the mic clip, so it's kind of like that part there that holds on the microphone. Oh my God, it's like Christmas. So there's a clip. That looks like it's, yeah, it looks like it's in perfect condition. No problem there. So as far as actually clipping it to my Rode PSA1 studio arm, boom arm, um, I'll, I've been looking at accessories. I probably will. I probably will get a pop filter. The um, where did I put that? I just took that off here, and now I can't see it. <laughs> I'll probably buy one of these for this as well. Um, this actually has an internal pot filter, like I said. Um, this is really good packaging. You know, I, I said at the start that, you know, I'm not too worried about it being a fake, etc. Oh, I didn't realise we were going to get that. Um, he did mention that, that he didn't have the original road bag. It come, so when you actually buy it brand new, you know, for the close to 300 mark, you would get the clip, you would get the pouch, and you would get the mic. And... He lost the manuals, printed it out, and he put in another, um, he put in a pouch to keep it safe. So fair play to the seller. Wow, this thing is heavy. Wow. Well, that's, right, okay. So, first impressions are this thing is very, very heavy. Very, very heavy. So, um, got the grill at the top, looks quite professional, this is actually used by like the, was it the Adam Carolla show, they, they've got like loads of these set up with the, the foam, with this kind of thing on top of it, I'll buy another one for that, um, it's got uh, an on air indicator, so when it's being powered, or when you're on air, it will be a little light, a little light that will shine up and show you. Now down here you've got a low cut filter, now I don't know if you guys know too much about microphones but basically this is a dynamic microphone which basically means that it's designed for speaking close to it so if I go over here, I can keep talking like here, you shouldn't hear me too much and then when I come back you should hear me okay. So that's a, a dynamic microphone and that is different from a condenser microphone, a condenser microphone will take in all the background sounds and you know it's not actually ideal for radio for podcasting for youtube but this is a condenser microphone but it has a low cut filter and what it does is i can't remember what the hair but see under 70 is it 75 or 75 i can't remember i'll need to check that but it's under a certain le limit it'll just the low cut filter will cut it off and what that'll do is it'll take out wind noise it'll take out background noise it'll take out fan noise and things like that and when you flick the switch it kind of performs like a dynamic microphone, but you're getting the quality of a condenser microphone. Now, one thing here, um, now whether this is real or not, I believe it is real, but 
Right. This. Two things that worry me. Two things here. First is, if you look at the XLR there, I don't know if you can see that, one pin is all the way out. All the way out. So the pin is all the way out. That's not good. Shouldn't be like that. It should not be like that. It should be... Um, they should all be equal. So I don't know if someone's pulled it out right, so that's worrying. The other thing is the serial number, they've just put four digits. And that doesn't sound right, because it should be six or seven numbers. So that could be fake. Could be fake. Definitely could be fake. I could have got a fake here, guys. Because the serial number has just got four numbers and it's written in black ink. So look at that. This could be a fake, guys. So there's two things that are making me think it could be fake. 7, 9, 10 and the XLR. Now, the seller did sell, uh, sell it and he sold it as seller refurbished. He sold it as seller refurbished. But when anything's refurbished, it should be working correctly. But the serial number is worrying because the sticker thing has just been put on himself and it's coming off. And the XLR point... That's the, you know, the serial number might not be a big issue, but the, um, the XLR, I don't know if you can see it there, look, one pin is higher than the others, so I could have been done here, guys, I might have to send this back, I don't know, I'll need to check it. So what I'm going to do now is clip it on with the clip, and we'll see whether this does perform better or not, but yeah, it's definitely a concern. Not 100% sure yet, but that's definitely something that I need to think about. So, I'll check it now. And you've been listening to the Shure SM58, one of the most popular microphones in the world. But if this, in theory, if it is a real one, it should perform a lot better. I'm back with the Rode Broadcaster. I've been playing around with this for around two hours or so. And... I've been trying to find the right level. I'm not sure if I've got it there yet. I'm getting there. But, you know, with every microphone that you get, it doesn't matter what you get. Every time you get a new mic, it's a different gain level, different way that you need to set it up to get the most out of it. I've set this up. At the moment, I've got about... It's about 40... 40 decibels of gain. It's about that. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. I don't, I'm not sure if it is. I don't think it is, actually. But... This is the thing, when you look for advice online and these kind of things, how to set up a microphone, everyone sets it up differently. One of the YouTubers that I really respect, uh, Podcast Mike, I, I watched a lot of his videos recently because I've been looking for a microphone. He has some fantastic tutorials and some fantastic audio tests. I highly recommend subscribing to his channel. Really good YouTuber and he's very helpful as well. If you look down at his videos, you'll see that I was asking questions and he was answering me. So please do check out his channel. On his this video, he told me that he had set up his audio test at 20 decibels. Now, I set mine up at 20 decibels and it was really, really low. So I've got the audio in a uh, audience ID 22. And, you know, this is the thing, you know, with different preamps, with different audio interfaces, everyone needs to kind of set it up a little bit differently. So, there's probably two things that you want to know. First, what's the microphone like? Second, is it a fake? Well, I'll get to I'll get to whether it's a fake or not. Let's talk about the microphone. Well, you should be able to see here, the red light. It means it's powered on. Uh, this requires 48 volts of power. And if I was, didn't have this switch here, the 48 volt phantom power switch uh, enabled, then you wouldn't hear anything. There wouldn't be enough power to generate this microphone. There's two features here that I guess, well, there's more than two features, but there's two here I want to talk about. There's the high pass filter, which I think I, I might have called that low pass filter earlier. High pass filter, and there is the internal pop filter, which should stop popping and Peter pick a, pick a pickle, that type of thing. Now, I've heard some people say that if you talk at an angle, you can still get good audio and, you know, you're not going to get the, any pops. I don't know. I, I, I listened to a couple of clips 
and in my opinion it's still picking up some popping i don't know if i'm maybe just talking too close to the microphone that is that's definitely i'm so used to talking close to the microphone with this microphone that maybe i am just been talking too close but if you will uh, stay with me two seconds i hope this isn't too annoying so this isn't really designed for this but it actually fits okay so maybe i'll just end up using this instead of buying a new one um this was just i think this was just a generic one that i bought a few years ago i actually bought for my if you can see it there in the wardrobe next to the random ladder that i've got there um the mic in the background is the audio technica 2100 usb atr usb and i bought it for that whilst i was going to south america because i thought right i'll need a pot filter and um seems to fit okay actually maybe i'll just stick with that so i think from the samples that i've heard them you were listening to be to me before but i think even though this has got an internal pot filter i think that it sounds a little bit better with uh, a windshield on now you can buy these kind of pot filters and see to be honest see after getting used to using one of these i hate these now i hate them i find them very annoying and one of the reasons is you know the, the idea is that you set it up and you, you put it like that and it you know it does kind of get you the right distance from the microphone it stops the plosives but because I'm always switching my mic from one direction to another because, I, you know, I film there and then I film here, I just find it very annoying. So, moving forward, if I, you know, this is the mic I'm going to be using, then I will probably use a little hat. I'll put a little hat on the microphone. So, the other thing is the high uh, pass filter and I don't have it on yet. This is something I've actually got in my audio interface, but it's not something I've had to use in the past because I was using dynamic mics. But what I'm going to do now is switch it i'm going to turn it down and that's it on that's it now on now so here's the thing i, I listened to some samples and I, I was switching it on and off to see if there was a major difference i couldn't hear a major difference um it was actually cutting out a lot of the background noise on its own so i don't know i'll need to listen to it more closely i do have a noisy laptop it's the fans even when you the cpu is at 10 percent, the fans go crazy so hopefully if there was any noise before maybe it's gone now hopefully um so what i did there if i can show you it's probably got too many windows open just now so that's what i was doing um there's a high pass filter and it was at flat and i toggled it down and engaged the high pass filter the hpf so what that's what i just did there So, you know, does it seem to be, seems like quite good. It seems to block out a lot of the sound to the side and here. And I'm talking now, I'm talking at the same level. And looking at my levels, in fact, I'll show you my level, guys. I'll show you what I'm looking at. Um, looking at my levels, when I go back, you can still hear me okay, I think. The noise will drop a little bit. So here's another test. So now standing at the back of the room, I'm trying to talk at the same volume, but I will be a little bit quieter. And it will be interesting to see how that sounds. And then here's me talking at the side, talking at the side. But obviously when I'm talking at the front, it should be a little bit louder. Now, again, I don't know if I've got all these levels set up correctly as far as the gain level and all that. You can see, well, you can see it there. Um, you can see that I'm trying to keep it at the kind of top of the green, middle of the yellow. Trying not to get it too bad as far as clipping goes. I don't want it. I don't want it to go red. So I'll try and keep it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm supposed to do. There's so many. I'm not an audio fellow. I'm not an audio engineer. And every time I read an article, it tells me to do one thing. I read another article, and someone tells you to do the opposite. Honestly, see, there's a really good forum called Gear Slots, and on, like all these top guys are just arguing with each other and disagreeing with each other. So. For a novice like myself, it does make it difficult to know what to believe and what to follow. So, a quick comparison with the Shure SM58. Um, what I'm going to do is turn up the gain. And I'll turn off the phantom power of the... Of the testing. There we go. So, in fact, hold on. So, I'm talking just now into the road broadcaster and now i'm talking 
into the Sure SM58, but it's still getting picked up a little bit here. So what I'll do, hope this will make an annoying sound. I'm going to turn off the Phantom Power. So now all you can hear is the Sure SM58, and you know I'm talking close. I don't have the windshield on because that mic has stole it, and yeah, I mean, it, th this will hopefully give you guys a better comparison. Um, hopefully, hopefully you guys can get a good comparison. But again, it is important to remember, like, when you're doing things like this, as far as getting the levels right, as far as comparing them, it's, it's, it's hard to try and get it fair. In my opinion, it is. I'll do my, I'm doing my best. If you look at I'm trying to get the levels at the same, you know, I've set up the game so that, you know, I'm peaking at the same level, roughly. So I'll turn on the 48 volts. So, in fact, did you see that there? So, so what I'm going to do, see when I turn on the 48 volts phantom power, check out the light. And we're live! <laughs> so, um, I'm going to turn down the gain of the SM50, in fact, I'll turn it back up for a second. Right. So this is the Shure SM58, and this is the road broadcaster i'm trying to do a fair test guys it is quite hard to try and get the levels a similar level um hopefully that test helped a little bit so yeah microphone i'm going to have to listen to it a little bit more i've listened to a lot of samples but i'm going to you know i'll edit this video and i'll see what it sounds like right next part is this a fake is this a fake well i don't know I really don't know. Um, I, I I was concerned about that when I was ordering the item in the first place because it said seller refurbished, but it wasn't being sold by a company. It was being sold by an individual trader. I chatted to the guy. He was really friendly. You know, he's packaged everything up. He's been really nice. So, you know, I'm not trying to accuse the man of anything. I'm just covering my ass, basically. And And when you're spending a lot of money on equipment, you know, it's nothing personal. But, um, so the key things, as I said, was the XLR port, was that the pin was a little bit further out, and doesn't seem to affect it actually connecting, doesn't seem to be, so maybe that isn't a problem. The other thing was the sticker, and they've wrote on 7910, or whatever it is, and um, now that could be a legit, legitimate serial number because a lot of the serial numbers are just 0000, 0, 0, 0 and then like four digits. So it could be a legitimate serial number, but I can't verify that. In order to get a 10 year guarantee from Rode, you need to verify your purchase. You need to tell them specifically which, either upload the, where you bought it from, like a receipt, or you need to tell them the store that you bought it from. And if you don't buy from a verified store, Rode don't give you the 10 year guarantee. Now, is that an issue? Mm, not really. In my opinion, no. You know, I've saved a third, I've saved £100, which will be going towards other YouTube equipment. I've got a lot of things to buy, like a lot of things, you know, docking stations and all these other kind of things and um, cameras, never ending. But if I don't get the guarantee, it's not a problem because microphones generally keep working, really. You know, if if it's working now, it'll be working a year, it'll be working in two or three years, in my opinion. So, if I don't get the guarantee, it's not an issue. Really, the issue is whether it's a fake. If this is real and it's been refurbished, I'm happy. If it's fake and I've been conned, I'm not. Because really, I just want the quality. If this is a quality microphone, I couldn't care less about the warranty. I couldn't care less about the sticker there or the fact that I, get, I didn't get a box. None of that matters to me. And at this point, I don't know. I don't know whether um, I don't know whether this is fake or not. That's my honest opinion. And the reason that I spent a couple of hours messing around with this was I wanted to try and listen to the quality uh, to see because you'd like you'd like to think that if this was a fake, you know, it would be obvious. You know, the quality wouldn't be there, but it does sound quite good. It sounds like a good microphone. So I don't know. You know, seller refurbish. It could mean that they just fixed something at the bottom. It could mean that they took the whole thing off and put in another capsule. And maybe that's where they've, you know, been cheap and put in a cheap capsule. I don't know. I really don't know. I've got very little information about it. So 
when you look online, there are a lot of fake road mics. There's actually been fake road mics being sold on Amazon as well. So it is something you need to be careful about. Um, I don't think there's any, I don't get the impression that the seller has been, you know, misleading. And if he, you know, if he did buy a fake one, I think he's been sold a fake one. I don't think he's did anything to me. Um, my gut opinion at this point, I think it's real. I think it's refurbished. And I'm hoping I got a bargain. If I'm wrong, guys, let me know in the comment area. I could be, I could be just, <laughs> I could have got, I could have got this all wrong. Um, but it's hard to draw conclusions, you know, um, I think in a microphone, I do need to try and set it all up correctly. I, need, I do need to play about with the levels a lot as well. And um, it does, you know, in the, in the short clips that I recorded, it does seem a little bit better than this. And I think with a windshield, it will be, it's going to be a lot better. And as far as handling noise goes, if I get it in a good uh, shock mount, it's going to be better as well. So I might have bought a fake, guys, but I don't know. What I've done is actually, is I've sent the seller a question, just ask, listen, can you tell me more information about where you've bought this? And hopefully I can, maybe even I'll, I'll email the pers the company he bought it from, or I can see that they sell refurbished goods, and maybe I can figure out whether this is real or not. Um, I don't want to send it back if it's if it's real. I would only want to return it if it was a fake, but this is the thing with fakes. You need to be inspector closer to try and figure it out. So, yes, overall, overall, it seems like a good mic. So, uh, I'll, if, you know, if I am keeping this, I will be doing a, a, a thorough review uh, once I've had more experience with it. This has been a long video. I do realise that, guys. I do realise I've rabbled on a lot. And I do realise that, you know, some of you guys probably just want a four-minute video. But I wanted to explore the microphone. I wanted to show you uh, the unboxing, if you could call it that. Um, I wanted to do lots of tests. And I wanted you, you guys to hear what this sounds like. It looks like a, a good mic. It looks the business. And, you know, I'm going to have to do more tests. I'm going to have to play around with it more. But it looks like a good microphone. So I'll just do a little sp spin round. You guys can check it out. So this has been the Road Broadcaster. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I don't know if I've bought a fake or not. You guys can let me know in the comment area. Um... I'll, I'll be doing more tests and we'll figure it out. Thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Please do leave a comment below. I love hearing from you guys. And do click the like, share and subscribe button. If you weren't bored with me rambling on about this real fake, real fake microphone. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll speak to you all soon. Take care.